So he told me, because you don't have money to go to theater, you'll have to endure the pain because I want to help you. Mm. He performed that surgery when I was, uh, that, that procedure when I was very alert. I screamed in the hospital. Oh my God. I was bleeding all over. I went to the toilet and it was full of blood. If there is something that affects men, <coughs> it is money yeah. and manhood. Yeah. Mm. It was really affecting me. I remember the other time I was walking in town and then the carpet fell off. I don't know what happened. But I felt something moving down my trolley. Mm. Sana to our offices, mm -hmm. tuko offices wow. kwanga. It's a nice place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me about yourself. Now una talk a wapi, wapi. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. My name is uh, Isaac Maura Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. Wanjiko is my mom. Mm -hmm. I come from a single parent family. Mm -hmm. That's why I use her name. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I come from a place called uh, Kenal. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Come on, Jack Kenal. Yeah. Along Tika Road. Uh -huh. Yeah. Moranga County. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born and brought up. Mm -hmm. But of course, right now, mm. I am a resident of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Growing up, life in Kwaje, um, you Life was kind of interesting mm. because um, I come from a small family uh, where we have uh, my mom, my brother, and I. Mm. So we, grow, we, we grew together. Uh, we were brought up by our mom single-handedly mm. so we went to school well and uh, life was interesting I would say there were so many challenges of course but I thank God because my mom is one strong woman mm. she worked really hard uh, sometimes we didn't even know how she could uh, you know uh, give us a life eh? mm. but in one way or the other by the help of God of course she was able to bring us up, mm. up to where we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where did you school? What courses did you take? Um, I went to primary school mm -hmm. and uh, I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. Then I went to a nice high school. Uh, I performed well, but uh, when I was in high school, my mom really struggled. Eh? But uh, by God's grace, uh, I did well. Then uh, after finishing high school, I didn't exactly know what I needed to do. So somebody advised me to do electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, well, I never thought I would do that course because when I was in high school, I wasn't so good in uh, sciences. Mm. But somebody told me, when you finish, like you finish school and then a person tells you, ah, do a certain course because mm. it has a lot of money. Mm. So I went to college, I did electrical engineering. Like in Lenikalia proper. <laughs> the love was not too I loved sciences, <laughs> like in the sciences, they didn't <laughs> love me. Yeah. So I uh, Lenikalia, but uh, all in all, Nili Maliza. Mm -hmm. But eventually I was to change the course mm. because uh, eventually mm -hmm. that is not actually what I ended up doing. Eh? Okay. Because as soon as I finished uh, college, mm. I got an opportunity to volunteer in a, an organization, okay. an NGO. As a what? I was a volunteer, oh, working uh, as a... Uh -huh. I was helping in the social work uh, department. Huh? Mm -hmm. So we were basically in charge of the sponsored families, you know, going to monitor them, mm. you know, uh, going to monitor development projects and all that. Eh? Oh. So I was assisting in that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I volunteered for slightly over two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, when I was still um, volunteering, I got an opportunity to train in life skills. Uh, okay. I, I trained in life skills. Eh? Mm -hmm. 
uh, a course that was to enable me, you know, do counseling, mm -hmm. guidance, and stuff mm -hmm. to, uh, to young children in primary schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, after training, I started getting some uh, short, co uh, I mean, contracts eh? mm -hmm. in different places. Actually, I, tr I, I, I was able to travel in different places of the country, like uh, Kisi, mm -hmm. you know, Ukambani, so many places eh? yeah. to train on life skills. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then, when I was still doing those uh, trainings, I got an opportunity in that organization. Right. They announced vacancies. I volunteered. Mm. But I didn't want to apply because, you remember I did electrical engineering, yes. mm. and now this is a community development yeah. field. Mm. So it was a total clash. Yes. But somebody encouraged me and told me to apply because in a, anyway, I didn't have anything to lose mm. because it was basically applying and if they would absorb me mm -hmm. then i would have said it was a blessing okay. yeah so i applied mm -hmm. and then uh, you know fortunately by god's grace i got an opportunity in that organization so i was employed mm -hmm. like an official employee of the mm -hmm. organization yeah so that's where my story starts great yeah. so um before you continue the next part of the story mm. i'd like us to sit somewhere so that you continue the next okay. uh, phase okay. but before that i can see you even have your toolbox with you you'll yeah, tell us this is my office <laughs> yeah. you have I'll, a working office you. yeah you'll tell me why you have that box what it does what yeah. is it for yeah so um come on karibu sana okay thank you very much. Yeah. so isaac mm -hmm. sir isaac yes sir isaac. you Tell me that uh, this is the point where your story begins. Yeah. Please start from the beginning. What mm. exactly happened? So my story begins in uh, 2014 when I was still working with the organization. Mm. Uh, because as you remember, I told you I used to do like uh, community work. Yeah. So our work involved office and field work. So when we were going to the office, we used to maneuver using motorbikes because they were quite flexible. Eh? Mm. So like uh, every uh, member of staff was assigned their motorbike. Mm. So one evening when I was uh, going to a certain village, um, I happened to, to be involved in an accident. Eh? I was avoiding to hit a child, a little child who was, you know, crossing the road. Mm. So and nilimuana tu ametokea from nowhere. Mm. So when I applied the brakes, eh, the motorbike rolled. At that time, I acted too strong. Mm. You know, I was trying to, to prove to the people who are around that uh, nothing major happened. Yeah. So I rose up, took the bike because uh, it didn't have um, uh, like um, major issues. And then I went back. Mm to the place that I was coming from. So sure. I, I terminated my mission for the day, mm. so I went back. But when I was going, eh, I could notice uh, blood on my hands, legs, then I was feeling some pain on my left foot. Eh? Mm. But again, I told myself, you know, I'm a man, you know, I will manage this. Because Kujikaza. yeah, nothing was visibly broken. Eh? Mm. But when I was riding back, I got to a point where by the, the pain became too intense mm. and then it was like uh, my left foot was numbing. Eh? So I stopped, parked the bike and s sat down and trust me, I couldn't move. So I called uh, one of my colleagues eh? mm. and I, I should um, thank him. I have never um, thanked him eh? like mm. personally, eh? but I want to take this chance to sure. thank him. He's uh, Peterson Karani. When I called him, eh, he panicked. So he actually came with an ambulance. Oh. So they uh, came for me and uh, took me to one of the hospitals in, in Nairobi. Eh. Mm. So when I went, when I went there, um, they also thought that I had uh, fractures, but uh, when they did the imaging and all that, eh, they realized that I didn't have like uh, those major injuries. Mm. So I was treated, they wanted to admit me to observe me, but of course um, I told them to let me go home and then if I had an issue I would still ca go, uh, go back to the hospital. Mm. That was in uh, 2014. Eh? Mm. So when I went to the hospital, uh, when I went now home, it was already late, I think in the night, it was around 1am. Mm. So I got home, slept 
and uh, you know, I took a break from uh, my workplace, Kidogo, mm -hmm. because I tried going there, and th this time I didn't want to, nene. I didn't want to, you know, to let other people that I was involved in an accident. Mm. So I pretended that, you know, I, I broke my leg when I was, you know, crossing somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, because I didn't, ha I, I didn't want so many issues. Yeah. So after that, now I continued healing. Eh? But uh, no, the, the following day, when I went for short call, I realized that I was uh, bleeding from my manhood, eh? and it was very painful. Mm. But again, I concluded, because the doctors observed me, and they told me that I was OK. Anyway, and, uh, everything was OK. Sure. But let me tell you, as time went by, the pain was, you know, unbearable. Mm. But when I went to the hospital, they gave me some uh, drugs, I think, to, no to neutralize the, the urine, eh? so that uh, when I'm passing urine, I don't feel the irritation. Sure. But over time, the, the, the amount of urine coming from my manhood was reducing, bit by bit, bit by bit, mm. until I got to a point whereby I was really straining to go for short call. Like, I would go to the toilet, mm. then I would take like uh, 10 minutes just to empty my bladder. But um, I have to be to, to admit something. Eh? I, I, I have been a coward of the hospital since I was a young child. Mm. I, I don't like uh, that hospital environment. Most men don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can even run away. Mm. So I, 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 I was like, I was in denial. Mm. I knew I had a problem and I needed to go to the hospital. But again, I was telling myself, anyway, you went to the hospital and the doctor said that you are okay. Mm. But now I got to a point where I couldn't take it anymore. So I went to a, a certain hospital. Um, they advised me to, uh, to see a urologist. And when I went to him, he told me that he was suspecting probably I had urethral strictures. So urethral stricture is basically narrowing of the urethra. Mm. Like when I was, now when I was healing, according to the doctor, eh? because I explained to him what happened, mm. he told me probably when I was healing, the urethra shrank. So he told me I would go for imaging. They are called uh, uh, urethrogram mm. to determine the extent of the damage because he was supposed to, you know, uh, to perform surgeries. Eh? So after the, the urethrograms, so he said that he would do two stage uh, surgeries. Mm. Uh, first stage urethroplasty and second stage urethroplasty. Mm. So when I went to the, you know, to, 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 to do the imaging, the doctor realized that the extent of uh, the surgery was, uh, you know, it was like, um, it, it had affected almost the whole of my urethra. So he told me that, the, um, like, now, that, that's the point he told me that it was evident he would do the two stages. Eh? Now, when I heard about theater, and of course I, I had never gone to theater, mm. so the moment he told me about theater, I freaked out. Yeah. So I told him to let me go home and then uh, think about it, and then I would go back, you know, and tell him the way forward. Mm. So I went home. I continued struggling. I would struggle. Like if if I came to town, I I, I, I couldn't go to Urino because I didn't want you know I, I didn't want people to wonder why I was taking so long. Yeah. So I would wait for people to you know. I, I would wait to get into the normal uh, um, toilets mm. so that I would lock, and then uh, nobody would know what I was doing there. Yeah. So I struggled for quite some time until the urethra blocked Kabisa. Mm. So when I went to the hospital, it was like almost an emergency. So the doctor admitted me, mm. and then he performed the first stage urethroplasty. It was a very traumatizing surgery because it was basically like opening the whole of my manhood from the top to the end. Mm. And then uh, he would, you know, let it be open for a period for a period of like uh, six months after which 
he would now try to reconstruct this, the, mm. the urethra. Mm. So he performed that and uh, I went back home after some time in the hospital. But remember I was working. Yeah. So I was supposed to go back to work. Yeah? But I had a very nice manager. Mm. And then of course we had, uh, you know, they, they would give us sick leave and all that. So I think I took a break of over two months. Mm. Paid after, leave. Yes. Good. After which I went back to the to, to my workplace. Mm. Now there is something I want you to understand. Mm -hmm. I have undergone a surgery. My manhood is open. The wound is still fresh. Mm -hmm. The doctor couldn't, you know, like uh, put the the goose, eh? mm. the, the bandage. Eh? So it, it was supposed to be open. Even um, any time I would go to the office, I was forced to carry boxes, different, you know, like uh, I would carry like uh, four or five boxes. Mm. Because you see like the way I'm sitting eh, and I'm open, there is a open, uh, an open wound. Eh? So I would, I would carry like uh, four or five boxes because I would, you know, keep changing. Yeah. Because, you know, there was discharge and all that. But again, I had to work, you see, because if, if I continued staying at home, I risked losing my job. Yeah. But, okay, all along this time, eh, I didn't want my, my colleagues, I didn't want them to, to know what I was struggling with. Yeah. So I would carry like a small bag. When, when there was nobody in the office, then I go with it in the toilet, I change. Then the other one I wrap, either I throw it away or, you know, I go home with it mm. to, to wash it. So I continued that way until um, the time that I was supposed to go back to, to the hospital, I think after six months. Mm. That's when now this, the, the doctor performed the second stage urethroplasty. Now he was now to, you know, to take my manhood to the, to the normal state. Mm. So he performed uh, the surgery and it was successful. Mm. Then I was discharged. But um, after I went back to, you know, uh, after I went back home, eh, I don't know what happened. The wound ruptured. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, when that happened, eh, that wasn't something that. Uh, the doctor like would go and suture. Mm. Uh, I was supposed to still wait for several months for the wound to heal so that he can repeat. Yeah. Yes. At this point, mm. how are you relieving yourself? How are you maneuvering life in this kind of situation? Okay, that time, eh? mm. let, me sh let me show you something. Eh? Mm. Because there are some things that I will mention and probably people do not understand that. Eh? Mm. I carried something. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. I carried something called catheter. Mm. So during this time, eh, I was put on this. Mm -hmm. This is called a catheter. So this one is inserted into mm -hmm. the bladder mm -hmm. and then the, the urine collects in this bag. So you only open this lower part Aww. and then you empty the urine. Eh? So once you empty, you, you, you cook it. it eh? mm -hmm. yeah. Or you can dis detach this. And then there is another cabin like this one eh? called spigot. You lock it here so that you don't carry Aww. this. I, if you disconnect this, eh? so it means urine will collect in your bladder and then the moment you open here, it empties. It empties. Eh? Mm. So all along, mm. I was put on this. So you will be carrying this everywhere yes. you go. Yes. So what he did, eh? mm -hmm. um, he he put it through my groin. It is called the suprapubic catheter. Mm. Yeah. So like he perforated uh, this point, and that's where it was inserted into the bladder. Mm. So urine was uh, collecting automatically. Okay. It was very traumatizing because you can imagine carrying this. Uh, sometimes 
I could carry a backpack eh? and then I put it there. Now, the tricky part of it was uh, like I go to the supermarket or uh, mm. high security buildings. They want to check my bag or uh, they want me to leave the bag. Then I tell them I can't leave my bag. They ask, are you carrying food or laptop? No. So why can't you carry? Yeah. So I have to explain. explain. You see. How did this affect you mentally even? Because this is not normal for a human being to go through. It was very traumatizing. Mm. Ibon, let me tell you, eh? if there is something that affects men, <coughs> it is money yeah. and manhood. Yeah. Mm. It was really affecting me. Yeah, so mm -hmm. because um, you see, eh, like uh, the first time I went to, to the hospital, eh, mm. <laughs> it was you know. That experience was a bit bizarre to me because, you see, you are surrounded by so many people there. Eh? Of course, they are medics. Mm. They want to see how you are faring yeah. on, but you have to expose your manhood to all of them. It's not easy. So, after now the the nini, the the second surgery, yeah? mm. and you know after what happened, so I went back to the hospital, and then he performed the that surgery, which was again successful at, at that level. Yeah? Sure. And then uh, I went home. Then after. I think two or three months, eh, my contract ended. Wow. My contract ended. Mm -hmm. It didn't have anything to do with... Uh, with your health? Yes, mm. it didn't. It was basically, okay, the organization was uh, restructuring, eh, mm. and it was necessary for them to lay off some you know, members of staff. Yeah. So unfortunately, I was among the first uh, lot mm -hmm. that, uh, that was laid off. Eh. They, they were laying people off, you know, gradually. Yeah. Like this year, this number, next year, the other number. Mm. So unfortunately, I was among the first ones to, you know, to be to be laid off. So you see, uh, actually, I knew I knew about the the the, the non renew of my contract. I think uh, less than a month to the expiry. Mm. Remember, I, I have undergone the, that surgery. Mm. But um, when, I, when I got the employment, eh, I worked really hard. Yeah. So within a very short period of time, I had uh, bought a pickup. Mm. So I bought a pickup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had go, uh, bought a pickup. So it was uh, like um, complementing the salary ah, that I was getting. Yeah? Okay. Now, when I when I heard about the the, the contract and renewal, uh, I rushed into opening a business to mm. cushion me from uh, you know the effect yeah. of joblessness. Mm. Eh? So I opened a business hurriedly, and uh, I thought probably I was set. But again, the wound ruptured ah. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, after I left my workplace. Eh? I started developing weird complications. Mm. Like I would go, I remember the other time I went to hospital because uh, you see, yeah, this, this car that is supposed to be <coughs> changed like uh, once per week. Mm. Like this one, this one is called rubber. 
uh, catheter. There are others which are called uh, silicone. Eh? That one, those ones are a bit durable than this. Mm. So th this one is quite affordable. Eh? But the other one was uh, a bit expensive because buying it, no, th this one only, mm. without the urine bag. Eh? I would buy it at, uh, I think, around 1400 mm. And then, of course, I would uh, incur some expenses in uh, having it changed. Mm. So, uh, I have opened a business. When I left my workplace, I started developing complications. I remember the other time I was walking in town, and then the catheter fell off. I don't know what happened but I felt something moving down my trouser. Mm. It was it was a very tough moment because it was on a on a Saturday and uh, the place from where I, I would collect the the catheter they, 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 they weren't opening on Sunday. So it meant I would stay with urine for the whole of Saturday evening, Sunday, up to Monday. So I, I went through a lot. Mm. After now, you know, losing the job. So I had to move from the place I was living to try and, uh, you know, uh, live a life that I would, uh, you know, handle. Remember this time, eh, I told you I come from a single parent family. Mm. I wasn't opening up fully to my mother because I didn't want her to know exactly what was happening mm. because if she knew that they had an issue with uh, my manhood, eh, you know, parents start panicking because yeah. they wonder whether you'll ever get kids, whether women will, you know, want you mm. for marriage and all that. Eh? So I was, you know, I was queuing that information a bit. So I would tell her I had some little issues with my, my bladder, but it is something that they were fixing. Yeah. So this time, because I didn't want people to know that, you know, my, the, the way my manhood was there, eh? I was going to the hospital alone, yeah. So no support, no nothing? Okay, sometimes my friends could come, eh? mm -hmm. but they would see the catheters, but they didn't know what was happening. Yeah. So I would tell them I had some issues with, with my bladder. Mm. So uh, I moved to a place where I could manage. And you remember I told you the, the wound ruptured again, eh? So I knew I needed to go back to the hospital. Yeah. And the savings that I had, uh, by the time I was leaving uh, my workplace, I had already opened a business. Mm. This is a new business. I know a new business is just like a child. Eh? Sure. No much expectation. Actually, you keep give, giving a lot to it mm. until it, you know, it stands. Eh? So I was really drained financially. So what I did, I, I sold the, the pickup that I had at a drawaway price. Mm. I can't even mention the money that I sold it because it was like desperate times mm. calling for desperate measures. So part of the money that I had, I topped up on my business and, uh, you know, trying to go to the hospital and all that. Mm. Eh? Then it got to a point where I was fully drained. This time I hadn't opened up to my mother. Mm. After, after being discharged from hospital, I went direct to to the village, to where my mom stays. Eh? Mm. And then I, I saw the way she was being affected by that issue. Mm. And that's when I decided I will not expose her to the details of what was sure. happening exactly. Because you see, having this catheter, especially the supra pubic one, eh, it is a very painful experience because mm. it is right at the waist. How do you even move? I'll so that time, at a sequence of because like you belt it in a finger. Mm -hmm. So I would walk around without uh, a belt. Then I would try to stretch my trouser mm -hmm. outwards so that it doesn't, Affect you know, press yeah. the, the, the catheter. So it was very painful. That time I went to, to, to my mom's place. Eh? I was always in too much pain. Like I couldn't even sit down. Sometimes I could be forced to lie on the bed or you know, kneel down. So I, I decided to be alone mm. just to prevent her from, uh, you know, from all that. Mm. Then I never told her that I lost my job. Mm. So I lied to her that uh, I was on uh, sick leave. Mm. And because she was used to me being home for sick leave and all that, uh, 
she didn't you know press mm. me to tell her exactly mm. what was happening so i was imagining probably my my business would pick eh? once it picks i tell her by the way i resigned so mm. i'm now running my business mm. but now after some time eh, my business started doing very badly because you see i couldn't nini, i couldn't go to monitor it mm. because i told you i started developing some weird complications yeah. like pains like kadeta inatokana and all that mm. so eventually my business was mis mismanaged and I had to close it i think after uh, around three months now this is the catch uh, Yvonne mm. eh? I have sold the pickup yeah. I have closed down the business I don't have an income I'm on catheter I'm supposed to go for a third surgery a fourth surgery mm. yeah fourth surgery so how do you move from that point where will you even get the money to fund this treatment yeah that time I felt alone because uh, I wasn't used to begging from friends. Mm. I was actually the one who was giving it. Sure. And right now, I can't, it got to a point. Take your time. It got to a point where even feeding was a problem. Mm. And my because okay, you see, this is a foreign body in your body, eh? mm. so it is prone. The, your body is prone to constant uh, infections. infections. Mm. So most of the time, I was using antibiotics. Eh? Now I'm supposed to have the catheter changed, feed, rent, and all that. It wasn't easy, mm. but I thank God because. Somehow I managed. Mm. I don't know how I managed, but uh, of course I lost so many friends mm. because the moment you become a liability to people, most of them tend to like uh, withdraw. Yes. Yeah. So that that happened to me, but of course God brought some new friends mm. who stood with me. I remember there were those who could bring me food; others could even pay them for me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't easy, it wasn't easy. Mm. Coming from up there sure. to down here, it wasn't easy. Mm. So I struggled along, and then I became suicidal. I remember, and I have to thank my, my auntie. Uh, uh, forgive me, I'll keep uh, mentioning some names. No eh? I think this is the right moment to thank some of the people who stood with me. Eh? Mm. I remember there is one auntie of mine, Anaito Mahamorin. Mm. She came to my place with uh, a certain guy who was managing the building in which I was living. Eh? Mm. Even I don't know how they came, and I don't know what read, you know, ran into their mind. They decided to come to my place. Mm. That time, that time they came over. I had locked myself in the house, mm. and. That day I was seriously suicidal. Mm -hmm. They were God sent. I don't know Indeed. what happened. Mm -hmm. So th when they came, eh, my auntie was very curious. So uh, I had locked, you know, the the, the two locks, eh, the the upper one and the lower one. Eh? Mm. So she became so curious. She asked. She asked me why I had locked myself during the day. Mm. And uh, Akanza Kwangali Angalia, I see if she was looking for something. Mm. Then I pretended to be very strong, but I broke down. So at that point, that's when they realized that something was happening to mm. me. So all, all, uh, all along this time, eh, I was very suicidal, mm. but I was acting very strong. Even I was the happiest person on Facebook. I was this jovial guy cracking jokes, encouraging people 
you know, going to groups, you know, I was very vocal. Mm. And during my private time, eh, I was this, you know, very broken heart. Mm. So I, 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 I struggled along. Eh? And then one day, eh, a certain guy, uh, and again, I want to thank him. Eh? He's mm. called uh, Eric Mohanda, happened to call me. Then he, okay, he was uh, calling to get some contacts for another guy, a friend of ours. Eh? Mm. So he asked me, by the way, Isaac, uh, how are you feeling on health wise because uh, you've been through surgeries? So I told him, eh, it got to a point whereby I gave up. Mm. Then he told me there was no way I was going to give up when they were there and they could organize themselves and, uh, you know, support me. Mm. So he asked me what I needed and all that. So he told me he would uh, talk to the rest of the, the guys with whom I went to high school eh, mm. to try and uh, see whether they could uh, fundraise for me to go to hospital. So he asked me whether I was comfortable with that. Yeah. At, at some point, I was hesitant because mm. I didn't want to like expose, uh, expose my, yeah. my, my problems. Eh? But I obliged. So eventually, they, you know, they were even shocked. They were shocked because they never, ever thought that whatever I was going through was actually happening. Mm. So they formed a WhatsApp group. They, together with others with whom I went to school, you know, primary school with them, and they fundraised for me. Mm. And then, um, fortunately, I got another friend of mine who had a colleague who had an issue uh, almost similar to mine. Sure. And he was assisted by a certain uh, uro uh, urologist in uh, Kericho. I think he works in uh, Eldoret, but uh, he also works in Kericho. Mm. So he gave me the number. I called the, 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 the surgeon and he told me the only place he could uh, meet me the nearest place was Kericho. Mm. I told him even if he, were, he was in Uganda, I would, would go there. Go. Because remember, during this time, eh, I had tried going to so many uh, hospitals. Eh? I don't want to mention the, the names of the hospitals, mm. but I had tried to go to various hospitals, but I couldn't get help. Mm. Like I go to a hospital and then I'm told I'll be put on a clinic for six months. Mm. You put me on a clinic of uh, six months and I can't even go for for short call, mm. you see. So I, I, I felt they were a bit unfair to me. So I was willing to do anything f to, to get, get help. Eh? Mm -hmm. So when he told me to, you know, uh, you know uh, that he could see, see me in Kericho, and again, he was very affordable. Mm. Actually, I think he was charging me 2,000 for consultation. And mm. in Nairobi, uh, some were charging 4,000, 5,000 for consultation. consultation only, yeah. Yeah. Now, if they perform some procedures, I mean, I could pay the upwards of 10,000. Mm. I don't have an income. Mm. <coughs> so I went to Kericho mm. after now the fundraising and uh, the field surgery was performed. Mm. And I, went, I, I came back to, to Nairobi. I don't know whether it was because of the traveling or what. When I got to the house, because you see, because of the, the repeated nini, mm. uh, rupturing, eh? mm. I was always paranoid, so I would keep checking. checking. Mm -hmm. So mm. when I went to check, the wound had again ruptured. This is after the field? Wow. Yes. And the pain, of course, is intense. Yes. So when I called him, eh, mm. he told me to take a picture of uh, that part. Mm. So I took and then sent. I, sent, I mm. sent him because he couldn't un understand what was happening. So when he saw it, he told me, come to Kericho immediately. So again, now he's calling me to Kericho because he didn't know my situation. Mm. Eh? That time I didn't even have money to go back to Kericho. Mm. So I had to talk to my friends and they gave me some money. So I traveled to Kericho. Mind you, this time I was traveling alone. Because again, I, I was, dealing with so much eh? mm -hmm. you know protecting my mom from uh, knowing exactly what was happening she still doesn't know at that point she didn't know at that point even even today she doesn't know exactly what was happening she knows that i had an issue with my bladder mm -hmm. 
yeah because i didn't want her to to, worry. Know, to get to worry mm. yeah so i went there uh, i was admitted for some time mm. i was treated for infection because i had used catheter for so long now i'm talking about uh, i think uh, 2017 mm. 2016-2017 there. Mm. So after that, uh, I, I came back home, then went back to my friends, fundraised, went for the sick surgery, the same thing happened, went back home, fundraised. But I want to thank some people. Eh? Mm. I want to take this chance to thank one guy called uh, Diane Masinde mm. and his wife. Uh, Akelo, they run a group uh, called Single and Saved. I was a very active member of that group. Eh? They mobilized the, the members of that group and within record time, they fundraised me and I was uh, able to go I for said. surgery. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, um, the, the, the sixth mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. But again, the same thing happened. Rupturing again. Yes. But now the seventh surgery, I got help from one person and the surgery was performed. Mm -hmm. But again, the same thing repeated itself. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the eighth surgery was uh, the successful one. Okay. Is it the same doctor who's doing all this surgery? No. I, I got another doctor. Mm. and. This doctor was God sent mm. because the moment I, s I, I, I met him, eh, I explained to him everything that was happening to me. And all these surgeries? All those surgeries, where I was getting the, the finances from, mm. what I was going through. He looked at me and he told me, Isaac, I'll be praying for you. I don't want you to come back to me. That is good. I want this to be the last time that you're coming to me. I don't want your money again. That's a good one. Yes. Mm -hmm. That doctor would take his phone and call me almost daily. Isaac, how are you feeling, mom? Are you still taking the drugs? Mm. He could like uh, follow up on me every day. This time, eh, there are uh, some instances that were quite painful to me. Eh? Because I remember there was a time uh, again my the catheter fell off eh? and that time I told you I stayed for the Saturday evening Sunday and Monday mm. when I went to the hospital eh, they tried inserting the catheter and it couldn't go through so they had to literally suck the urine using a needle and a syringe like they put it through my groin and they would drain it are you, uh, you know, under anesthesia? No, 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 no. Oh. Leave that alone, eh? You know, there are so many details that uh, I'm leaving because I don't want to, you know, to get too emotional, eh? I remember the other time, like, when, I, when the catheter could fall off, eh? If, you, you see, it is very flexible. Mm. So you see, it is very flexible. Yeah. Eh? So, some slight r resistance, in a mm. So they would perform something they, they call a sounding. No, sounding is putting metal bars into the manhood, into the blood. The other time I went to a certain surgeon, eh? and since I didn't have, it was late in the night, I think it was around 11, 12 in the night, eh? mm. I didn't have money to go for proper surgery. Mm. I think I only had consultation fee and some little money. So he told me, because you don't have money to go to theater, you'll have to endure the pain because I want to help you. Mm. He performed that surgery when I was, uh, that, that procedure when I was very alert. I screamed in the hospital. Oh my God. I was bleeding all over. I went to the toilet and it was full of blood. And you see, it is, it is not like uh, one road, eh? it is n a number of them, mm. like uh, from the smallest to the biggest. Like he puts one, you know that that is the first one, he will put another one. And then another one. 
another another one like four or five and I'm a man I'm mm -hmm. supposed to act strong because of course our African culture tells us to be strong mm -hmm. so it was a very painful experience there were there are so many other very painful experiences mm -hmm. Like another one, I went to a hospital, a government hospital. I don't want to mention the name. Eh? I got there. There was Kulupa uh, mm. I'm a doctor. So I think the whole hospital had one doctor and one nurse. And the nurse was even drunk. Then I laid there. He screams at me. You, you are telling us you are a man and you are a, a hermaphrodite. Sure. Because of the nature. You see, my manhood was open. And, uh, you know, it was very embarrassing. Eh? I'm so sorry that you had to go through all of that. No one deserves it. Yeah. This time, eh? even keeping relationship was uh, an issue because mm. I didn't have people to my phone confined. Mm. Now to prove myself as a man, because again, okay, that time I was, I would say I was somehow popular on social media. Mm. So I could get so many, you know, like uh, I would have too much attention, especially from ladies. Mm. So I used to flirt a lot eh? because I want to feel like a man. Mm. I don't have many I'm struggling with my manhood. So like, if somebody comes to me and they tell me, oh, you look good, I would play along, you see? And it could affect even my relationship, eh? mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to, to, to be with a man who flirts yeah. with anyone. But I was doing that, you know, to feel like a man like any other man, because I was dying internally mm. and now I was like if even uh, a medic can look at me and they seem like not a man or half a man mm. eh? then uh, and and again I was hearing so many stories like uh, there was a time I had a very crazy story somebody telling some another person that I don't have a manhood that it was choked off so I can't even have sex I can't have kids and all that mm. You know, and then again, eh, you see, um, I love charity, eh? and uh, you know, I love helping and uh, seeing people help one another. But let me tell you, Yvonne, if there is something that puts a person on the spot, mm. is seeking for help from other people, eh? yeah. not necessarily because they want anywhere to monitor your life, but will be feeling like somebody is monitoring how your life is going. Eh? Mm. So I was going through a lot. Like I move around, I see people and I'm like, maybe they know what is happening in, uh, to me. Maybe these are the people who are supporting me on Facebook. So they know what I'm struggling with. Mm. It was very, it was very, 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 very painful. Mm. But I thank God because anyway, somehow, I don't know how, but I made it yes. by and by. I could get to side door. I remember the other time I locked myself in the house. Eh? That time I had uh, applied for pre-authorization for support by NHF, and they had declined my 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 request three times. Mm. They were saying that it was fraud, and the reason why they were saying it is fraud, it was because it was the same surgery repeated so many yeah. times. There was so they were wondering, ain't this the surgery that we approved the other time? I went to the house and locked myself and I told God, listen, I don't want to kill myself because then I know that is sin. Mm. What I'll do, I will lock myself in the house. I will not take what I want. I won't drink anything. I won't anything. If you really care about me, just come and deliver me from this situation. Mm. Yes. Because uh, to me, you see, the devil has a, a very cunning way of convincing people. And sometimes he sounds more convincing than God, eh? mm. if you're not very careful. That time I was like, uh, yeah, this is a brilliant idea. 
in the end you are not committing suicide. Yeah. I mean you are putting God to, to, to test, test and yeah. he, he says we put him to test eh? and see, see what, what we can do. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I locked myself, eh, I knew ah, this is the moment. God, this is your chance to prove yourself. Mm. Let me tell you, he proved himself. Oh, yes. What happened? My friends came over. I don't know where they came from. Okay. Somebody Good. called me. Mm -hmm. He contacted somebody who worked with the NHS. And my request was approved within 30 minutes. Wow. I got the money. I was, was booked for the surgery. And trust me, the last surgery was the best in everything from the doctor, the medics in the hospital, the friends who came over. Do you know, every time that I was going for, for clinics, eh, mm. I, I could always get somebody coming to pick me, take me to the hospital. Wow. Once I see the doctor, somebody calls me, send me the pay bill. It is paid, hey. food, everything. That is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was after that, now I started the next phase of my life, ah, picking where up I started the picking up the pieces. Okay. Yes. And because I know I'm dying to find out what's inside this box and mm -hmm. what you do with it, yeah. um, I don't want you to tell me, using your words, mm -hmm. what you do. Yeah. I want you to show me. And so let's move to the next phase where, of course, you continue telling me the story yeah. to how you pieced back your life together, yeah. as well as you showing me how exactly this hassle helped you pick up your pieces. I'm highly obliged. Thank you. Let's move to it. I'm seeing you're setting up things here, mm -hmm. and there's so many equipment, so many brushes. Yeah. What, what exactly? Can you explain to me? Wow. Mm -hmm. So, I'm um, Sir Isaac. Mm -hmm. That is the, the name that I use okay. for my profession. I am a professional makeup artist. Right. Yeah, by training. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will tell you how I came to, to be a makeup artist. Because if you can remember, uh, I did electrical engineering, mm -hmm. then I went back to do community development. And then eventually now I'm doing nini makeup. Eh? So you can, somebody may wonder how did that transition come mm. to be. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't want to just say it. I want you to see what I do. Mm -hmm. And then you'll tell me whether I qualify this. I'm a Nirudi Nikapanya community development. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a engineering. Eh? Okay, yeah. mm. So mm -hmm. uh, I will do a very simple uh, makeup look. Do you do makeup by the way? Yes, but a little also, very subtle. Mm. Ah, mm. nice. Mm. Then uh, we are together on that. So I a very simple look. Mm -hmm. As I explained to you, how I became a makeup artist. So, right. mm -hmm. yeah. so to look at Mefika, happy. Mefika, your life turned around mm -hmm. after your friends came through for you and yeah. you got the eighth surgery. It yeah. was successful. Yeah. So how are you piecing back your life together? Wow. Mm -hmm. So the, the way I, I became a, a beautician, let me say a beautician. Eh? Mm -hmm. It was sheer miracle mm. because after and uh, going the seventh surgery, mm. no, si the sixth surgery, I got some help to go back to to school. Mm. Actually, be before I did all the the, the other courses, eh, mm. I, I had passion for beauty, mm -hmm. but I was in denial. Nila wakati unakumka those days mahali like uh, if you are working in a salon. What will go on a pelekwa Kazia salon come on machine on Masomo? Or uh, you know, Unafanya Kazi Kido Kidogo, you manage and then you go to a salon, mm -hmm. you are trained Unanza Kufukana. Mm. So I didn't think it was something serious because anyway, it wasn't a, a, a serious passion eh? mm. uh, and any profession. Eh? Mm. So I was in denial. In as much as Nilikwa Naipenda, Nilikwa Nana Pana, I don't belong to Nini to, to that course. Eh? Mm. And then, of course, Nilikwa Nafa from Vizuri High School. Mm -hmm. 
And then mtu fulani ya kani discourage. Mm. Kufanya hiyo kosa kaniambia pana. You performed so well. Mm. Then usi enda kufanya kosa kama hii. This is not the thing for you. Uh, this is not the, the thing for you. Plus as a man, of course, at that point, I Kulikuwa imagine. Kulikuwa na bias. Akukuwa na atu yengi. Yes, yes, ah, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even have nini, like uh, a male figure mm. to nini to inspire me into into taking the nini, the, um, the course. Eh? Mm. Yeah, but now when I got nini support, mm -hmm. There is something that I did. When I I'm going back to school. I knelt down, literally, and I prayed to God for three things. Mm -hmm. One, I told God, eh, I don't want to ever miss going to school because I was hungry. Mm. I didn't have school fees or I didn't have fare. Mm. And God did all those. Wow. The second one, I told God I didn't want to be ever the second best. Mm -hmm. I was always the top. Third, I told God, I don't want to ever be employed. Trust me. Kutoka ni maliza shule, sija yenda kutafta kazi. And look at you now. God opened. Wow. Nimi yata venya nilinunga hizi vitu, it's sheer miracle. Mm. Yeah, so nika, nikaenda nikasomea. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the, the, the seventh surgery was done when I was still, nini, when I was still in school. Eh? Mm -hmm. So... I will lay your edges. Okay. Yeah. You have very nice hair. Thank you. Natural hair. Mm -hmm. So I will just lay the edges. Okay. Do you fine fine look with you? Kando kando. Yeah. Today I came ready for this. Kabisa. I did not even do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. here for you. Ah, yeah. So, I came and I came and I finished. Mm -hmm. So when I finished, uh, Nilimaliza and then nikapata complication mm -hmm. and I needed this, the last surgery mm. and like I told you, mm. it was done and it was successful. Mm. So he kazi imagine ilianza 2020. Oh. Yes, because 2019 nilifanya kidogo, mm. but uh, nilikuwa naifanya kidogo kidogo because I was, you know, I w sick on my heel. Mm. Let me surprise you. Mm. Kuna wakati nilienda theater kuwekwa hiyo supra pibiki ya hapa hivi. Ile una wana kudunga wana mm. kueka, then wana kushona nilienda i was so hungry for for work eh, to be independent mm. because even mm. so i fry ya nini atikusaidiwa always be happy when you are helping others not when you are receiving help eh. yeah nilitoka theater saturday jioni on sunday i traveled all the way to kirogoya to, to work. Do what? work yes are you in pain at this point Nimetoka theater Saturday. Nilikuwa na oki. Oh yeah. But you still have to fend for yourself. Yes. You but I want to thank that nini client of mm. mine. Eh? Mm -hmm. She was the first client 2019 before now I took a break. Eh? What was the event? Anaitua, oh, okay. anaitua Jerry. Mm. That time I likuwa anaitua Jerry Peterson. Eh? Mm. Thank you very much because she believed in me. Ata cool. sikuwa na, na experience nzuri. Mm. Tanki doga. Alikuwa na event gani? Alikuwa na harusi. Oh. You can imagine risking. Eh? Yeah. Because that's the most important day of your life. Yeah. Wow. But she believed in me. And uh, you delivered. And I delivered. Eh? Mm -hmm. And that's... Uh, do you know what are nini? Ata, 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 nini, ata products. Mm -hmm. I bought na pesa zake. Oh yeah. Alini pati a deposit, I think 10,000. Mm -hmm. Nika nunuwa tu product kidogo. Then eh, kidogo kidogo nika nini? Mm. I started saving mm. now when I nini, you get a client. Yeah, when mm. I get a client and mm. I save. Mm. Then when I underwent the, the last surgery. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now niki niki saidi wana watu. Mm -hmm. Mimi si kwanza tikukula nyama ama nini ama mm -mm. nini. Yeah, no, no, no. Risk. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I did eh, nilikuwa ukinipatia mia tano mm. na kula mia mbili na eka mia tatu. Within one month, I think na two weeks, eh, mm -hmm. I had saved around uh, 20,000. Wow. That's when I bought the bo this box, I think nearly by 7,500, it mm -hmm. empty. Nikaomba, niliyombe ya literally nikambia, God, this is my mustard seed. Nimenunua box, a bullet and products. Na ulete nini clients and all that. Eh. So, nimekuwa nikigro pole 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 pole. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Nikulize. Yes, please. What is the most uh, important thing mm. in makeup? Ninini mtu anafaa mm. kujua zaidi when they want to maintain a nice skin, mm. healthy skin. Yeah. 
na you know to just look glamorous throughout yeah. whether or not you use makeup what's what advice unapeanga clients wako maybe ile advice na wapatianga the advice number one eh? mm. always use genuine products right. yeah because mm-hmm. the moment umeanza kutumia products zenye nini mm. zenye ni counterfeit eh? you will mess up your nini your face you can mm-hmm. close your eyes kidogo okay yeah the moment unaanza kutumia counterfeit products eh? mm-hmm. Unajua zinaenda direct into your face mm. and ukiangalia face ya mtu mm. inakonga very delicate eh? mm. yeah so always focus on uh, you know using uh, genuine products eh? mm. yeah and then of course understand your skin type mm-hmm. ujue kama ni dry mm. oily mm-hmm. normal mm-hmm. ndio ununue zile products zenye zinapelekana na skin type na skin type yako haya niko na yeah. swali nyingine uliza for makeup kwa sababu kuna watu wengi sana wanafanya this kind of profession mm. currently mm. what sets Sir Isaac apart from the rest what would you say is your competitive edge haya mm-hmm. one of them eh, mm-hmm. is faith in god good anytime um, I, i get a client eh, mm. in fact if a client calls me and uh, shows interest in my work mm. i seal that deal with prayer mm. naambia nga mungu i don't want nini ati ile mtu ananipigia simu and mm. then all of a sudden they change Marash. mind mm. yeah because it is one thing to call and another thing to actualize that the deal, the deal eh? mm. so i always you know uh, pray a lot anytime i'm going to work i always ask god mm. you know aguze tu mkono zangu nikifanya kazi i deliver mm-hmm. and then of course i pray for my clients mm-hmm. then again um, another thing is a personal presentation okay. you see i'm dealing with a lady mm. because apparently you know like 100% mm. my clients are women yeah. eh? so the way you present yourself tells a lot so where's the end up kama nime you know ni kwa hivi hivi and i'm promising somebody to do to something you know them. yeah mm. so the way you present yourself the way you present your products yeah Then the other thing is uh, focusing on uh, you know using genuine products eh? okay. and then again uh, respecting your clients mm-hmm. regardless of uh, you know their social status kama by them to kiniuliza who is the biggest client you've ever nini at kama usha itengeneza nini celeb or anything i tell people all my clients are celebrities all my clients are the same mm-hmm. whether you pay 100000 or 1000 I value you like I value any other person. Eh? Mm-hmm. Then again uh, you see this is a very sensitive industry. Eh? Mm-hmm. Like you call me maybe you're married or you're dating. Eh? The way I present myself to you and probably your spouse is there. Mm-hmm. In a way zamonesha like you know how I handle right. women. Eh? Mm-hmm. So I'm very careful. I'm very professional when I'm dealing with my clients. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah and then of course time management. Mm-hmm. That's very important. If you tell me we meet at 8 it can never be past 8. It can never be yeah. even a minute past 8 unless there is it's something really very 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 mm-hmm. urgent that happened. Eh? Mm-hmm. But of course I will communicate on time. Eh? Yeah. Then another one eh? when I'm like uh, serving my clients mm-hmm. I take time to explain to them what I'm doing like mm-hmm. why I did this the kind of products I'm using. Mm-hmm. I give them like uh, advice. Eh? and that's free for free you know. for free for free for mm-hmm. free yeah and then of course my charges are quite fair mm-hmm. quite quite fair okay. yeah they are very fair awesome. yeah Let's keep going mm. so yeah. what are you doing now uh, right now i'm concealing your eyelids mm-hmm. because uh, they are a bit dark mm-hmm. i don't want to y- you have very nice eyebrows eh? mm-hmm. so i don't want to sharpen them so so much eh? mm. i want to li- i want to leave them looking a bit uh, natural mm. because again you told me you love makeup but you don't like the the extreme one eh? no i don't want to do that yeah mm. so i'm just concealing your eyelids mm-hmm. because they are a bit uh, dark i'm using uh, a concealer that is slightly lighter than the rest of your skin eh? mm-hmm. Yeah so that it can be it can be uniform. Okay. Yeah. Woo! I look really nice and I like how you've done my edges. This is a completely different person. This is <laughs> this is very nice. You love it, eh? I do love it, Kabisa. Mm. Mm. Wow. And then how my face doesn't show at a lot of makeup. Yeah. I love this. Mm. Oh, 
this is beautiful. Thank you, Sir Isaac. Karibu sana. Thank you so so much. Yeah, karibu. Wow, guys, can you see how awesome this girl looks? Your girl is transformed. She looks fabulous. I'm ready to go and conquer. I can't get, you know, over <laughs> myself. Yeah. Wow. Can you do this every day? Well, <laughs> I am. This is my passion, by the way. Yeah, I can this tell. Is, this, this is, is what very I do from, nice. Uh, from wow. Monday mm -hmm. all through the week. Eh? So every like, day you have new clients. Yeah, I don't have. This is not my side hustle. This is my main hustle. Eh? Wow. There is nothing else that I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ebu Nikulize, mm. what are some of the challenges you experience when you're doing this kind of work? Okay, one of them is uh, uh, obviously the bias people have against it. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you are in the beauty, in beauty industry, there are those people who will start thinking probably you are not man enough, mm. maybe you are gay or you know something mm. but this is a profession like any right. other mm. like a doctor like a, you know a journalist like you or any other yeah. so there is that bias eh? so some people will look at you and uh, think probably their sex orientation is on the other side mm. but that is not necessarily the case mm. the other thing is uh, the prohibitive uh, prices of uh, makeup products eh? mm. most of them are very expensive especially if you want to use the professional the ones, eh? ones, they yeah. are very expensive then another challenge is, uh, you know, that period you take before you build a name. Because mm. for a woman to trust you with your face, yeah. you have to prove yourself beyond reasonable doubt. Mm. Yeah, and then, um, you know, the, f the market is a bit uh, flooded. Mm -hmm. But again, I believe if you are excellent in whatever you do, eh, you'll always create a niche, you mm -hmm. know, in the market. Okay. Yes, those are the, the main uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is, um, most people want to look good, eh? at no cost yeah like somebody wants to look like the way you look mm -hmm. eh? but uh, they don't want to pay for it oh, wow. you know, a lot of work goes to that a lot of exactly. uh, product and all that eh? mm. yeah so th those are the main challenges i love my look i can't get mm -hmm. over it i still wow. can't believe this is me this is how i woke up oh. wow <laughs> I have uh, one final uh, question, mm. or the second last, because I still want to know, yeah. you know, more about you. Mm. How can people reach you? How can people get in touch with you? Do you have Facebook pages? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, they can follow me on uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I use the name Isaac Maura Kafast. Mm -hmm. K A F I R S T. Uh, yeah, Isaac Kafast. Maura Kafast. Kafast. Yeah, I use Kafast because I'm the firstborn in our family. Mm -hmm. yeah. I told you we are two. Eh? Yes. So I'm the firstborn. So mm -hmm. I identify myself as you know the, the Kafast. Facebook, yeah, Kafast. So you can follow me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I also have a Facebook page, Sir Isaac. Mm -hmm. I'm also on uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. Sir underscore Isaac underscore Makeup. Good. So between every word there is an underscore. Eh? So sa underscore isaac underscore makeup mm -hmm. then of course uh, i'm also on youtube by the okay. way uh, in my channel eh, i use my skills to bring out the beauty because there are those challenges we face and probably you feel like you are not beautiful enough mm. so i'm trying to use my skills to bring out the inner beauty of people not necessarily wow. the tutorial part of it eh? mm -hmm helping people to see how beautiful they are. Mm. Of course, makeup is not meant to make you beautiful because like you, you are very beautiful. Thank but you. again, now when I did your makeup, eh, there is that way you, you, you know, your skin looks fine. Mm. Yeah, so I use my YouTube to, you know, to bring the, that inner beauty. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, it is called Sir Isaac. I'm also on TikTok, Sir.IsaacMakeup. Mm -hmm. Then uh, finally, I don't know whether I can share my number. Sure, please. Yeah, this my, is your camera. my number is 0721 Wow. So they can get me through those uh, platforms. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Isaac, for Karibu even sana. being vulnerable with us yeah. and sharing your journey and telling us, uh, telling us how these challenges have affected you, yeah. but not giving up. Yeah. The fact that you did not stop where mm. you were facing all these challenges, where you lost your friends, where mm. you lost your job, you still picked up your pieces yeah. and moved on with life. Mm. We appreciate you for that. Karibu and thank sana. you for using your story to encourage people yeah. out there. Yeah. You and wanted uh, to say something? Yeah, uh, I want to encourage men, eh? because mm -hmm. there are so many men who are going through very tough yeah. issues eh? mm. because i have talked to a number of my friends mm. and you find that probably somebody is struggling with something eh? mm. but because our our african culture you know forces men to be strong you know you know be strong don't show your emotions eh? mm. there are so many men who are suffering out there or uh, single mothers who yeah. have their uh, sons mm. they don't know how to deal with issues like mine eh? Because like me, I couldn't imagine going to my m to my mom telling her my manhood yeah. had been sliced into, you know, 
-hmm. So there are so many people who are struggling. If you are a single mom there and uh, probably you have sons you are bringing up, eh, mm -hmm. you can look for a man who can talk to your children. Eh? And uh, if you are a man out there and you are suffering with a certain situation, eh, mm -hmm. look for a good man with whom you can get vulnerable. Eh? Mm -hmm. There is no shame in you know even breaking down. There yeah. is no shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And those people who are uh, you know prone to begging. Eh? Mm -hmm. Begging is the last thing that I would advise anyone to do. Mm. Do something, eh? let people support what you're doing. Yeah. You see, like uh, what I'm doing, somebody may come to me and support my, my work. So they, are not mm. they are not necessarily helping me or uh, giving me handles. Eh? They are supporting what I'm already doing. doing. And that's why God asks, what do you have? Yes, yeah, so, so I can bless that. Exactly. Ah. So start something, even if it is selling sweets or anything. Let people see you doing something and probably they'll support you from what you're you know already doing mm -hmm. instead of you know going around begging from people yeah yeah great thank you isaac Karibu sana. thank you so much for even showing up here very early in the morning you are a timekeeper like you said thank so you. i respect that about you thank and you. guys let's support isaac he is doing an amazing job as you can see your girl is completely transformed this is Yvonne Kawira, as always. And thank you so much for staying with us till the end of the show. My name is Yvonne Kawira, and until next time, keep it to go.